Hi there, Bergman Lights here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, mini tree using seed pixels um, and uh, a bunch of parts that have been printed uh, that were designed by SFL Designs. And I've printed these on my 3D printer using uh, PETG filament. Um, the, the files for this and the pixels were actually supplied to me by your pixel store and SSL Designs. So uh, they, they asked me if I would do a how-to video on how to put together their mini trees. So uh, let's kind of walk through the bits and pieces for it. Here's a topper and the seed pixels will hook over the top of these. There's 64, so you could do a full 180 or a full 360 or 180 tree. This part actually has a spot for a quarter 20 bolt to go through it that you'll drill a hole through the tube and or through the EMT to lock in position and then this gets bolted to your topper um, and again it looks like it's a again quarter inch uh, quarter inch bolt so put that together this piece goes on the bottom uh, I printed with my multicolor and we put black there for it so again it's half inch EMT so you have six legs that come out the bottom pole goes in the center goes through to the topper like this and you have six that go out for uh, for uh, support on the bottom of your tree and then this part here well the EMT slides in and it goes around six just like this looks like I'm missing a part must but uh, you got six of those and then what you do is you put a uh, three-quarter inch up uh, PEX on the bottom and you can put some seed pixels inside that and the bottom will kind of give a nice glow effect and what you do on the bottom on the packs this clamps on the outside of it and then you use a zip tie to hook to the bottom of your seed pixel so let's go ahead and get ready to uh, assemble a mini tree here are the seed pixels it took me a little bit to figure out how to uh, to wire them um, I got it connected straight to one of my Falcon receivers it's going through on the ones here from your pixel store see if we can get a good look at it here um, there's a little dot on the wire for the there we go getting real close there there see there's a little dot on the wire that's the positive line the middle is the data and the one marked one on the other side is uh, the 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 negative or the ground and so this dash line here is actually the ground on these data and be positive. So they change the conventional. You got to watch for that on these, uh, these seed pixels. The wiring convention may not be what you're used to. So uh, just pay attention to that. You may have to do some testing. I saw a video from John Storms that actually did a nice job of walking through and making sure you could go figure out what you had in the way of how these pixels are wired. All right, so I'm using these uh, solder sleeves. I like those. Not everybody likes them, but I do like them. They do. I think they do a great job. And there we go. I'm going to get that in place. And I just use wrenches to hold in position. You may have seen this in some of my other videos. All right, I make sure it's all lined up there. Now I get my heat gun, and I hit it with some heat to melt the solder. Just watch it until it actually starts to flow. Melting the plastic. There we go, solder just went and just melted, and that's all it takes. As soon as you see that solder flow, is when you stop. Now I'm just going to let it sit there and cool. So I've cut my half inch EMT. I got one long section. It's five feet long and six one foot sections. The one foot sections will go on the bottom hub and give me a, a, a diameter of the bottom of it of uh, two feet, roughly a little bit more probably because of the hub. And I'm five foot. I'm really going to put the pixels up around four feet, maybe four foot and a couple inches. And I'm going to leave the top section on it for a star. Now, if you don't want a star, you can go with uh, a four-foot section. And actually, if you did that, you would be able to get a one ten-foot section. You'd be able to get the entire 
all the EMT for this mini tree. So to get the EMT for the bottom hub set up, I'm gonna slide the EMT through there. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie with a fine point on the end of it. And I'm gonna mark my hole. All right, and then I'm going to drill that out. And then after that, I will, once I get this uh, the M4 screw in here, I'll do the backside. That way everything lines up and stays nice and even. Down to the next hole, set up in my jig, uh, all clamped down, let's go. Oh, don't forget the oil. Just a little dab. There we go. For each one of my holes, I have to file. There's always a little burr there. So I get a flat file here, file it. Then I take a small round one. And make sure I get rid of all those burrs. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. And that's actually the side with the roughest edge. And that's it. That is where the drill bit came out. Yeah, so now it's nice and clean will easily slide in my 3D print parts. Now with your hole drilled, you just gotta thread the M4 screw in. And the M4 is really tight on this, this hole, but I just thread it in. You may have to enlarge the hole a little bit, or if you use a manual drill, mark one side, like put a little uh, sacrificial screw in there and then drill the other side. The hole on the other side of the the clamps for the center ring are done. And so now I get an M440 screw. And just repeat the process. And then tighten it. So that completes just the first, first section there. There's six of them to go. I'll just repeat those. Um, and before I lock all these in positions, I'm going to have to drill a hole through the center post. And it's again, it's a quarter 20 screw or bolt that you'll put in there. And you'll just need one hole through it and you'll line it up and do essentially the same thing as I've done with these smaller sections. I've taken the, uh, the pole, the center pole, and I've lined the hole up with and flush with the bottom of the center mount. Now I'm going to take a two and a half inch uh, quarter 20 bolt. Thread it in there. It's a little tight, but that's all right. I'll just thread it in. Now I'm time to drop in the second washer, as well as I have one of these lock nuts for quarter inch bolt. There we go. That end, got the lock washer or lock nut with a washer and the other end the same. So for your pecs, I got three quarter inch pecs here, purchased from Home Depot on 10 foot uh, straight sections. It's a little harder to work with um, than if you would have bought it coiled up in the roll. I believe they come in 100 foot sections. Maybe you can get, maybe you can get 50, um, but I'd have to go research that. So what I've done is I'm just going to kind of roll it around and I did a little bit of bend it on it ahead of time. All right, so it's going to, going to have to keep it held in place. Just roll it around like this. All right, and what I've got now, and I'm going to roll it back this way. I got myself some twine to hold it in position. What I'm going to do once I've done that is I'm going to hit it with a heat gun. Uh, get this um, PEX pipe to hold its shape for me. Okay, so off camera, I strung up at all the uh, little little screws in place and I cut the PEX pipe to length. And if you want a full circle, what I've got is I got a half inch T, right? The thought I have here is that I'll be able to string the lights in and I can put this half inch T in place. And push this down here put in my my wood screws my half inch long 
number six screws. Screw them in position to hold it down. And this way now, I have a way to uh, put in the wires and then have the, the seat pixels all the way around. Obviously I have to take this on and off as needed to uh, get all the wires, uh, lights strung through and then a piece coming out for the, uh, for the connector, for the, for the back of it. Now, if you don't want to do a 360 tree, you could actually just end it here and have this one section here of the string of lights around and uh, get yourself set up for like if you have a, I don't know, a 270 or a 180 tree that you want to set up, but that leaves you lots of options. All right, so I started running the seed pixels on the mini tree here. And the topper, you'll just see right here, it's got a little pocket for the seed pixel to sit on. That's actually a quite clever design. And I started on the top. All right, so there's my input. It'd be nice if you, if you can do it. It's just set up a little post and put your string of, uh, of pixels on a, on a post there. So they come out all in the same orientation. And then you hook them into the top. And then you'll run it down. Come on down the bottom here. And you'll connect it up to these here with two different cable ties. And so what I've, I'll show you the one right next to it, which I've completed. And you'll see I got a piece of plastic tubing right there. That's to keep the spacing so it looks like a standard uh, mini tree that you see that's out of coral. Um, and I'll tighten these all up a little bit once I get the whole set set up. That way there's a nice consistent tension on them. And what I got here is I've taken some literally refrigerator tubing, cut it to an inch in length, and then you can kind of see it there. I took a, a knife there and I wore gloves to protect my fingers from potential cutting and just sliced it down the edge. And what I do when I get the right number of pixels down here, I slide that between the wires and that forces you to keep a spacing at the bottom so you get even pixel spacing all the way up to the topper and then you wrap it around and come back down to the next set. Um, each one of these, I have uh, 10. I'm doing 32 strings, a half a tree. I have 10 pixel or 10 clips per quadrant, right? And so there's one, two, three for half. And then I put the final one just on the opposite side. That'll give me 32. Um, so that gives me a 180 tree. Um, I'm going to uh, solder on my uh, female connector at the end of the pixel string. And so one thing I'm going to point out again with these particular uh, pebble pixels here is there's a little white dot on one of the wires and that is the uh, the positive line okay and this particular pigtail I have here is this white dash section here is actually the negative so you need to make sure you get your orientation right or it will never work for you So this will be good to go in here in just a few minutes. Could let it cool off. All right, so now that I got all my pixels set up on my 180 tree here, I'm going to go and I'm going to tighten up the, the zip ties on the bottom and make sure they're nice and taut. Now I'm going to go opposite side to try and keep it balanced here. So I'm going to the complete opposite side. Get it balanced out here. I tighten this side up. That one's good, and I'm just going to go back and forth and work my way towards the center. All right, so I won't do all that on camera, but you guys see how they're all staying in perfect alignment. And on both sides of the string going up and down, here's my input. And up and down, I'm going to test out the number of power it takes, and I'll make a recommendation to you guys on how many pixels you want to run in a single run, okay, um, before you switch over. I do do power injection or power balancing. I'm first going to definitely try adding power to the backside, 
and see how that works out and if I'm able to run all of these lights um, off of one output. I may need to use two. We'll see how it all works out. So I have the mini tree all put together here. Um, I haven't quite cut all the cable ties in the bottom. I was making sure the tension's good. Um, I use fishing line here, a 50 pound test, and I put three of them running down some clips. That way I keep the, uh, the tension all the way around on the tree because all these, these lights coming down actually pull down on it. Um, so it's all looking great. Have all the strings of the mini tree uh, wired up. They're on my Falcon uh, differential receiver, running through its color wash settings. Uh, it's all looking good. I have one output driving it with uh, power balancing slash injection on the back side at the end of the string. And it's all looking pretty good. I don't see any issues with lighting. Um, nice spacing on it. So here's a connection shot of my, uh, my controller to the mini tree. You see, I got a couple little pigtails I have here that I made so I can use my clamp on amp meter to uh, see how kind of current's being pulled by it. I just got um, the output from the controller and then on the other side, I'm doing power injectors with the same power supply. Um, so it's a power balance type situation. So it's looking good. They're both pulling about three amps. So uh, that's looking good. Let's go around and look at the front. Let's see that. Um, not looking like there's any real dimming in between, between it there. So it's all looking really nice. So that completes my mini tree build using the seed pixels and SFL's topper. I got the seed pixels from uh, your pixel store. I'm using one output, um, and is able to get it with power balancing with power injected on the back side of it. It looked great. One thing to consider for yourself if you go and use only one output at the total of 800 pixels here. At 800, you'll probably won't be able to reach the 40 frames per second when you program your sequences and X lights. Um, you'll need to probably cut that in half with most controllers to get uh, a full uh, 40 frames per second. You'll get about 20 frames per second. And for most people, most sequences, that should be just fine. Uh, I've got my top left. I haven't ordered my uh, Coral Star, which I'm going to put up here. I'll do that at a later date. Um, I hope this uh, you guys enjoy, enjoy this video and it'll help somebody out there. You guys have a wonderful day.